Hi guys, it's Blackie. Yeah, Bear. And Miss Lita. And today we're doing always number 32. 32. 33. 33. 33. 33. 33. Tree tree. Alright. What we're talking about today is microgreens. Miss Lita's been doing this and I had no knowledge of this. The only thing I've ever seen is at the grocery store seeing little Brussels sprouts and stuff, and I thought that was them weird people, you know, live off Tree the salad. I had no interest in it, but she's really opened my eyes to this stuff. Mine too. And we'd like to share a little bit of this information to you. So, Miss Leah, now what you've got growing up here, I'm going to bring the camera in a little closer for a closer look at it. I want you to tell us what each one of these things is. One second. Now, what is this one right here in front of us? Okay, so this is a cantaloupe. Okay. This is an oat grass. Okay. This is a kale. Okay. Broccoli. Okay. Garden pea. Right. Um, this is a green pea. Green pea. This is an oat grass. <clears throat> Down here we have a sunflower, and you can see each one of them are in dis different stages of growth. Okay. All right. Let's start over here with this thing. We got these bricks and stuff. Okay, Tell us so, what this is. So this is your what you call a germination. One second, let me get set up. Okay, so this is your germination phase, and what you want to do is put your soil. You want a soil that has no fertilizer in it, just a basic soil. I add perlite and vermiculite to mine just for holding moisture. Um, you put this with the seeds, the soil, and the seeds. Um, he can show you that much seeds to make broccoli. <clears throat> That's tray. how much is for broccoli. So yeah. you put it in there, you water it, you water it once a day for three days and it goes through the germination phase. When it comes out of the germination phase, then it goes into what we call a blackout phase. So the whole process takes about seven to ten days depending on which microgreen you're growing. So this came out of germination yesterday and I have put it, in, or day before yesterday, in a blackout phase. Now it's going out of blackout phase into growth phase which will last another three to four days. When it finishes, it'll be green. You can see on the edges how the light's already green ended up where it was exposed a little bit. But it'll turn green. Mm -hmm. And so each one of them, once they get to this phase, after about 10 days, you're ready to harvest. Okay, now this being cantaloupe, and this is, guys, this is a regular cantaloupe like we get and eat anyway. Let me turn that a little bit this way. Okay. This is the regular cantaloupe we get it to the grocery store, eat, and then save the seed. Right. Dry the seed out, and then we run through the process and we produce this. Right. Technically, I could take these and plant them and let them grow into cantaloupe. Right. So that's all this is. But it's ready to eat now. So right. So once it gets this big, we can eat it. And we tried this. Take a guess what the flavor is. This is your target. Right there. The flavor is cucumber. This tastes just like you put a slice of fresh cucumber in your mouth. I was shocked. Me and Bear both were. I don't like cucumbers, raw cucumbers. This is good. I mean, this is really I good. I like this. But man, I mean, just doing that, I could take a half of that, plant this other half out here in the garden, take this half and eat it now, and be generating next year's seed to do this again until I got a big supply of seed I could get this rolling. Right. Now this takes how long from the time I start with the dirt to this phase? It takes six to ten days depending on what type of seed it is. Different seeds take different lengths. Right. So like the cantaloupe takes about eight days. A cilantro would take about 15. So it just depends. Some of them are six days, some of them are nine days. Mm -hmm. But it's something that I could start the process this week to have a meal off of it next That's right. Week. And if you plant it every day, you have a full meal of it every day. And so, like I said, I could take a... I wouldn't even need that much. Each one of these plants is going to start producing cantaloupe. Right. I could take, like, one handful, eat the rest of it as a salad or add into a meal sometimes, cook with it or whatever, and then put that into my garden and be growing cantaloupe or peas or broccoli, or kale, or etc., and constantly repeating and rotating them. That's right. But the nutritional value is what you're looking for. That's the best part of this. So in the stores, you sell 1.5 ounces, which is about this much. About that much. About a handful for $5 in the store. The important part about that 1.5 ounces is that it gives you the nutritional content of 40 times this little seed in a full-grown plant. 
So it's like have eating four pounds of vegetables when you eat 1.5 ounces. So that would be like you eat one apple and you're getting the same nutritional equivalent as eating like the whole bag of apples. Right. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So from us talking about a living off the grid type thing where you're going to be kind of have lean times, we know that. This is something you could set up easy as a, I can keep a resource going as something green. In a sunny window. And it'll grow in the sunny window. It doesn't have to have fancy stuff, but what this lady got set up right here is a light set. These are LED lights, and these were how much off of Amazon? Um, I think I got six lights for $30. Six lights for 30 bucks, and they're LED. They ain't going to draw hardly no power. Right. So if you were in a place where you don't get a lot of sunshine, you're up north, you could easily set this up and be growing something green that gives you a lot of nutritional content. And we don't have a lot of stuff we can pick up, like 100 pound bags of rice and stuff like that to put up. That is, yeah, it is nutritional, but it doesn't give you those big boosts and you start, you know, that diet gets a little bland. Learning how to do this, it, one, I'm recycling cantaloupe seeds. Eating seeds. Any seed, as long as it's an edible plant, we kind of figured out a little while ago. Yeah. Don't I, do tomatoes. Don't do tomatoes. tomatoes. They're they're nightshade plants. Yeah. yeah, and here I was thinking, hey, I could, I could try this with my tomatoes. No, no. that's nightshade. Bad idea. But cantaloupe, for example, I go to the store and I buy a cantaloupe. I eat cantaloupe, but I save the seeds, dry the seeds. I do this. That produces a tray, or a pretty good bit of a tray. I don't have any seeds and all. You know what I'm saying? And then that starts growing where I can plant these in the garden and make cantaloupe, saving my seeds from all the cantaloupe. So by the end of the season, I can grow these during the winter to and still have cantaloupe seed for in the spring to plant cantaloupe. Yeah. It's a great idea. And we tried several of these and they taste like cucumber pea, like veal pea. There's a lot of different flavors. I thought it all just tastes green and bland, but it really don't. They got a really no, good no, no. flavor. And the nutritional and the health, um, I guess you would say the health <coughs> benefits from all this is that these microgreens fight blood pressure, they fight, fight cancer, they fight Alzheimer's, um, mm -hmm. they're great for cholesterol, weight loss, and if you look up the magnesium, um, B17, sulfurophane, all of this spots cancer. So there's so many health benefits, not just the amount of nutrition you're getting. I can take a ribeye and I can take 1.5 ounces and for a meal, I just eat my ribeye and my four pounds of vegetables. Yeah, and that 1.5 ounce is equivalently nutrition. Can you, can you mix these effectively? Can you might take a pinch of these uh, seven inch salad mix a pinch of cantaloupe, a pinch of kale, yep. and put them all together. And, and make a salad out of them. You can put them in pastas. You can just make a garlic butter and put on top of them. I suggest for everybody that's trying them just to replace your lettuce. If you put lettuce on a sandwich, lettuce has nothing but vitamin A a little bit and sometimes fiber. But these have all of your vitamins and minerals, your magnesium, your phosphorus, your vitamin A. All those vitamins and minerals are in these. My suggestion if somebody's wanting to try these, go to the internet first and search microgreens. It will tell you that it is a superfood, okay? Mm -hmm. The reason it is a superfood is because it's so nutritionally dense, 40 times more dense than that full grown vegetable. A, a, the seed in the earlier plant, the small plant, has the greatest potential. As the plant matures, that goes <laughs> down because it uses this powerful to energy to build the big plant. Yeah, it's got to have that surge of energy to go from this to this. Right. Yeah. And so you're stealing it. You're, you're getting you're all eating, of that early. Yeah, you're eating that surge of energy. Plus, if you'll notice, in the spring, when all the new shoots are shooting up, all the animals are hunting the new shoots. Yeah. They'll ignore the mature plant sitting right next to it. They're going for the new shoots. It's got the most vitamins and minerals in it. They're smart. They know it. Right. Now, you do this as an additional income to put your everything else. Let's talk about that a second. You're doing this and then you start talking to farmers markets, local uh, grocery stores, and se uh, several other little niches. Guys, these would be great on tacos. Oh yeah, the sunflower. The sunflower right here, these are amazing. And see, they're just coming out of blackout. See how, with the pretty colors? Uh -huh. So the sunflowers will turn from the yellow to the green, like the ones that have been exposed, and uh -huh. all be green by the time it finishes. That's awesome, but yeah. 
whenever I tried the cantaloupe and it tastes just like, I mean, literally like, if you took that and had a little bit of onion to it and a little bit of dressing, Tomato. I would swear <laughs> I would be a cucumber salad, that. yes. I mean, I, it's exactly, but I mean. And even the grass, the grass has got that nutty sweet flavor to it. Yeah. People think, oh, I don't want to eat grass, but you have wheat grass, you have oat grass, there's so many different kinds. It, this stuff would make you not want to eat uh, lettuce real quick. Quickly. You Real can quickly. put it on a sandwich, you can cook it in pasta, you can eat it raw, you can eat it cooked. Right. There's, the, it's, the, the limits are, it's unlimited. It's just to your imagination and what kind of chef you are. Right. But like you said, it's zero to ten days to for get a product. Yep. Ten days. Some of them are less. Mm -hmm. So you can grow for yourself, you can grow to put in your garden, you can grow for nutritional, and you might find a, you know, a barter system like we've talked about here. This would be something you could barter, especially today with the organic restaurant, organic taco stand, and stuff like that. You might real quick find people willing to pay you for this. Oh, well, yeah. I have it in three grocery stores already, mm -hmm. locally. I have a couple of restaurants that serve it. Um, one of them is a taco place, <laughs> and uh, are pretty high-end restaurants. The chef likes them because they know the nutritional value, and they know that they make those plates pop. And when the people, flavor. What looks pretty, people want, and right. the flavor that they get. Well, one of the things that we don't talk about or realize that much is with industrialization and then kind of homogenizing out our food sources, that something that really struck me, I found out a couple of years ago, was that like apples. How many kinds of apples are there today? There's 17. How many kinds of apples were there in 1850? 1,700 different styles of apples. We've let all of them go away because we said we plant these, you know, we get seeds for these, we're going to go for these. And so it's made it today, doesn't have any flavor. It's meant so you can play football with it, you can ship it. Um, that thing about McDonald's is really a green tomato. It's got no flavor, which we live down here where we get fresh tomatoes. And once you ever eat an actual ripe fresh tomato, you'll never want them junk. Thank you, Slocum, Alabama. Amen. Amen. <laughs> but hey, we were talking about peanuts, uh, kale. All, well, could you grow like the this? Cereals, the flowers. Yeah. yeah. To try it for the, the taste, the flavor. And it would turn around and be something like I was saying, you could take a part of this and put it into my garden, and each one of those is going to become a, a cantaloupe plant. Or the corn, the popcorn. Or the corn, or the kale, or the popcorn, whatever. One thing, um, I don't know if we mentioned it, but you can't just plant one thing and quit. If you want to eat consistently, you're going to have every five or six days, you're going to have to start a new a new. New hey, run. A new, a new run. run, yep. You have to start one of these like every every four or five days, three to five well, three to five days. So that every ten days yeah. that one matures. And yeah. you've got you've got a constant supply of food for those tough times. Yeah. Plus the fact now and that's an advantage though, I can start to stop if for whatever reason, as long as I keep my seeds dry. Right. I can say, okay, we're going to be doing whatever, and I let this run out, I take my last crop, and I've got my seed stored, I can start this back up again in a couple of months or whatever. So during the winter, whenever you can't get greened or can't get fresh cucumbers, got a fresh, yeah. got a window of sun, you, you can grow it. Yeah. All you want. This, this, is a, this is really awesome. I'm really impressed with it. And also the fact that not only if you don't want to plant just for you, if you don't want to eat that much, you can take five minutes every day and plant a tray, and then you've got that to barter for somebody else. You've got something fresh. Yeah, exactly. the guy that's you know? got chickens and eggs down the road, right. but he loves cucumber salad. I can trade you this for a dozen eggs. Right. Well, I'll keep me a couple of days. You know, and if somebody comes up and says, hey, do you got any more of that? No, but I can have it in 10 days. Right. You know, that... And but like, in, in the meantime, I can supply you with this. Yeah. It's just then. as good and just as nutritious. Yeah. yeah. Hardly any. And then once you harvest it, you come in and cut this off, you're left with the root system. Right. And you say that you turn around and recycle that into... Fodder for my chickens. Yeah. Eating it to the chickens. The chickens yeah. will eat it. So I don't have as many um, to buy as much bag food because I'm feeding something to my chickens that is more nutritional than what they can even get in a bag food. Yeah. When you harvest, do you cut along the top of the tray? I do. Or do you go down into the tray a little bit? 
you, you cut just above the soil line. Okay. Right. You don't want to get the soil or any of that into the okay. green. So you're looking so at the stem I, about that far. Yep. And depending on, because some of them grow taller, some of them, you know, some of them are short. Just depends on the height, like that right above, above the soil level. That is all. That can be pulled off. That's what these look like. I helped, I helped Miss Alita. <laughs> And see, all it is is in these little shallow plastic trays. That's it. Now, I'm sure you could come up with something, but these are available on Amazon, right? Okay, so let's show them how to make a tray because you have to have a plastic tray that holds water. Right. You have to have a tray that has holes in it so that it can absorb the water. You put your dirt here, mm -hmm. right? And then you put another solid tray on top like that mm -hmm. when it's in germination. Once it comes out of germination, you flip it over so that you have the days in blackout, two, three days, mm -hmm. whatever it takes. You can see how it grows. Mm -hmm. You're looking for it to get tall. Lean Start that sprouting way. and all, Then yeah. you take it off and then you end up in this phase, which is the last few days of growth. So you would have your roots would actually come through here. This would be your root mat. Right. And especially hydroponics. Right. And here on the bottom, right. you got your water. And you water it every day. Yep. But you don't have to have a running circulating nope. system. You just water it once a day. And, and depending on your uh, humidity, what it's like, in here I do keep um, an accurate temperature. I don't let it fluctuate. So I try to keep it between 70 and 85 degrees. I try to keep the humidity between 40 and, and 65. Awesome. So. Yeah. All right, step right over here. All right, guys, this has been real opening for me and, and for both and we will probably revisit this at another time later on but we're talking about doing canning we're talking about doing all this stuff this is something that, that would be easily doable on a low shoestring budget yeah yep and also good with kids yeah get kids this growing would be fantastic with a pressure canner you've got the issue of them grabbing hold of the lid going whoop and opening it up when it's under pressure not good yeah Whereas this, this doesn't have that that problem, and I bet you those roots would be great for rabbits. Yeah, any as a feed for anything. For the guys that are raising rabbits for a food system, yes. Well, there's a super nutritious feed your rabbits right there too. Right. So I've talked about and Bear has too, and things when we were young, we saw this cycling of every step, whatever the waste product was in this became the beginning of that. Reuse it. We kept recycling yeah. everything, and this. Is I've already grown a garden. I'm keeping my seeds. My seeds roll into this. This sets up next year's crop, yep. and it's edible. The waste product of this will feed my chickens. It'll feed my ducks. It'll feed my rabbits, which will put more meat on meat them on for the me. Table. You know. So yeah, and it's just a cycling process constantly. And not, each step is not super intense. This isn't going to take ten thousand dollars worth of hydroponics gear or anything. No. A, a sunny window will do it. She said, you ain't got to have special grow lights, just right. sun. Sun, sunny window. So, well, thank you very much for this. We've really enjoyed this. I get a hug. Oh, yes. he, he, I, I get a hug. He gets a hug. <laughs> Till next time, guys, I'm Blackie. And Bear. Wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.